It's the old story of environment versus development and these two worlds colliding. We have more than 100 frog species in South Africa and half of them occur nowhere else but here. Frogs are amphibians, the first vertebrate animals said to have inhabited the land. But they remain dependent on water, especially for breeding. Frogs go through metamorphosis. Their aquatic young develop into adults with lungs, which enable them to survive out of water on land. Frog habitats range from high up in the mountains to sea level, and from damp forests to dry deserts. They continue to mesmerize us. They're interesting and beautiful, but often taken for granted which is probably what's happened here in Bulugwan. On the one side, a new housing development where 600 houses are being built for lower income groups. On the other side, the Bulugwane Frog Reserve, where at least 13 species, including the near-threatened African bullfrog, appear each year to breed in an ephemeral rain pool. This narrow but busy street is the buffer zone between them. The reserve is entirely unprotected and without proper borders. Despite the municipal warning signs, people have been dumping rubble here for a long time. It's no excuse. But had it been widely known that this was in fact a nature reserve, the rubbish dumpers just might have acted differently. Enter Andrea Stelzer. He's a founding member of the recently established Polokwane Frog Watch, a society that wants the development stopped. They say there's not a 150 meter buffer zone between the development and the frog reserve, which is what the country's environmental laws prescribe. The Polokwane municipality says it's at the discretion of the competent authority and based on the environmental risk. Our minimum demand would be the 150 meters uh, exist. Uh, there's no way around, so they cannot come closer than 150 meters to the border of the reserve. There's just no way. When Andreas first approached the municipality, it was not to try and stop the development. All he wanted from them was to put up a fence to keep the vagrants out of the area. Initially, all we were concerned about also as uh, a part of the uh, community police was the security in the area and it was discussed how good a fence would be between the open field and the railway line and of course everybody knew at the time that uh, there were lots of frogs in the area and I thought well it might be good if there's a fence because then that would also prevent the frogs from actually uh, becoming roadkill because that's how we mostly see them especially in the rainy season. To his surprise, the city's Integrated Development Plan, or IDP, had a reference to something called the Pulukwane Frog Reserve. But there was no address or coordinates to ascertain its location. Joe Grossel was able to solve the mystery. He's the ecologist who identified the stretch of land as a sensitive area in 1998 when he worked for the municipality. In 2001, the Frog Reserve was included in the city's plans for the future. It was identified by myself and other experts in the herpetological field as a sensitive site for bullfrogs and other species. There, there are 12 other frog species that, that breed here. I think at that stage it was addressed and it was proclaimed as a municipal ecologically sensitive area. And it was since then, it was called the Polokwane Frog Reserve. This was a little paradise after the, the first rains. We're talking about maybe an inch and a half to two inches of rain. Uh, this very dry area is transformed into a small aquatic paradise. The red-listed bullfrog is not the only protected species that's found here. There's still other very interesting natural phenomenon here. Uh, they little hedgehogs that are still found here. They red darter species. 
there's a, a very localized bird species that happens to be part of the Polokwane coat of arms. It's a very isolated population of short-clawed lark, and these birds still occur here. And as far as I know, it's the only suburban population of short-clawed lark in the world. Longtime resident Rupert Harris has lived in the neighborhood since his teens. So I used to come out to the uh, temporary rain pool, and uh, especially at night after a good thunderstorm, you'd probably hear at least 10 different frog species calling. Some years ago, Rupert collected these species of crustaceans from the temporary rain pool and kept them in an aquarium. He can't believe how the area has deteriorated. The frogs are still here, but I think that aspects of it have already been compromised by the uh, huge amount of dumping that's taken place in this part of the world. It's totally atrocious, really, really bad. So how did it happen that a massive housing development got the go-ahead while being right next to an officially proclaimed, yet until recently publicly unknown, frog reserve? And what about the non-existent 150-meter buffer zone between the development and the reserve? The Pulukwane municipality insists that the housing development is not inside the frog reserve and the prescribed regulations have been followed. Upon uh, the request of this interview, I was going back to the site to find the, 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 the species area not in a good condition, particularly with litter and, and some form of that. But remember, that's just a quick win more about education to ensure that the boards that we have put there as a municipality emphasize the protection of the species. The development is across the street of where the species is breeding and it's, a bar, it's outside the buffer and the breeding zone of the species itself. So with regard to trampling of the species and being a, a compliant to the buffer zone regulations, the municipality is compliant. But not according to Google Earth. Here's the housing development, and here's the breeding site. The distance to the border of the reserve is 30 meters, and to the breeding site, no more than 250 meters. As it stands now, within the, the IDP document, no development uh, should take place within 150 meters from the boundary of the, the little conservation area. The IDP, the Integrated Development Plan, as far as we understand it, is the Bible, if you will, for a municipality to, to develop. It is impossible just to deviate from it. So what we would want, obviously, from the municipality is that they stick to their own rules. However, the housing development does not fall under the auspices of the Pulukwane municipality. The Provincial Department of Cooperative Governance, Human Settlements and Traditional Affairs, or COGSTA, has owned the land since 2010. Coxter says the proper processes were followed and that an independent consultant had done an Environmental Impact Assessment, or EIA. 5050 obtained a copy of the EIA, which was done in September 2006. There is no mention of the reserve or the frogs in general in the EIA, despite it being referred to in official municipal documents since 2001. Cogster says the frogs only became an issue when the contractor dumped rubble across the road recently. The EIA is simply flawed, says Andreas. Well, of course, if you only come once in September where there is no uh, frog movement, of course, you won't see much. This is the Record of Decision, or ROD, which gave the owner of the land the environmental authorization to start developing the area. One of the conditions was that it happened within three years. But these Google Earth images show that not much happened until 2014, eight years after the ROD was issued. They take you through a very rigorous process before they even grant that ROD certificate for the project to start or to commence. The ROD is done by the local department of environment, but it's a high level document, which I do not think uh, could be flouted for any reason to allow for a development. And by the way, the project was approved as early as 2008. In fact, it was approved in 2006 on the 27th of December. At the time, a businessman owned the land. He'd bought up the area for just more than a million rand five years earlier. 
In 2007, he sold the land for around 19 million rand to a company called Eterno Investments 198. On paper, it seems as if they immediately sold it to Tubelisha Homes, the government housing agent. How do we know that? The two registration numbers at the deeds office follow directly after each other. In the process, someone made a quick 8 million rands as the price went from 19 million rands to 27 million rands, probably in a question of days, if not hours. The next owner, Tubelisha Homes, was a not-for-profit company that used taxpayers' money to conduct its business. But Tubelisha Homes was in fact technically insolvent by then. They told Parliament so, and by 2009 closed their doors. But interestingly, Coxter, yet another arm of government, then bought the land back from Tubelisha for a whopping 31.578 million rands in 2010. I don't have those details. Um, I don't know who sold to who. Yeah, it's not within uh, our area. Uh, I will not be able to comment on it. But what about the frogs? In terms of environmental aspects of the, of the whole matter, the municipality and ourselves are actually sitting on the same side of the table. And um, if we can resolve this in some way without going to court, then obviously that would be the preferred option. The intention really on behalf of government is not to uh, trample upon species. We respect them and we respect the law. If there are areas of municipality uh, that the municipality must improve on, that we can partner on, we are willing to do that. So can 5050 come back in November in the rainy season to see whether the situation has improved? Yes, yes, definitely. And I'm sure by then even the meeting with the uh, frog watchers would have happened.